Okay, let's chat about Star Trek Strange New Worlds uh, Season 2 Episode Charades. It's not charade, charades. Uh, which, laying it on the table, I'm not that impressed with Season 2 of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. I think they have taken the wrong lessons from Season 1, which was kind of the small, quirky, humanizing moments they've decided to lean heavily into. Uh, and maybe this is maybe this is the bad episode, because I've, I've already heard someone talk about this. It's like, oh yeah, we've got to have the one wacky Spock episode in each season. And I think the thing is, I'd seen enough wackiness already that when this one went full wacky with Spock doing basically a farce. It's the, oh my god, my in-laws are coming to dinner and I have to pretend to be full, I have to pretend to be Vulcan even though I've been transformed into a full human is, uh, was just groan worthy. I, it, this, the, the show with all the kind of, like, everyone's kind of, everybody in the show uh, quips and is wacky. And, you know, it's nice if there's, like, one or two characters who are funny and you have, like, straight people. But everybody in this show is wacky. And so, like, yeah, when Spock is basically majorly fucked up and is yelling and is can't control his anger and is is doing all this stuff, it's all done for comedic effect. It's like you're a... You're a you know, you're, 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 you're a commanding officer on this giant starship where you'd think there'd be a certain amount of precision in these, oh. these kind of characters. Hey, shh, Shira, chillax. You'd think there'd be a slur, uh, but then I slip back into that. I mean, that's not the show this is. Other shows, um, Next Generation was very much, okay, we are professionals doing a job, and yes, we can kind of maybe be goofy a little bit on our off time, but we have to kind of be serious and very focused and like we're at the top of our field kind of how you'd expect an engineer or somebody who is like in the military you'd, you'd have off time where they're blowing off steam but they'd be pretty kind of like buttoned down that is not this, this modern star trek you kind of let that go but the f thing is like it's all chocolate it's all chocolate it's all everybody is being all everybody is being wacky and fun. Everyone is being wacky and fun all the time. So it's like, okay, I guess it's just the comedy show. I guess it's the comedy show. And, you know, nobody's, there's not really a feeling of stakes. There's not really the feeling of we're immersed in a story because everybody's being wacky. Everybody, it's like the Marvel effect. It's like, we can't actually have a serious moment without then just having wackiness. And, you know, um, the actress who's doing Nurse Chapel is trying to do, kind of, is trying to be like, ah, I really have feelings for this person and all that. But it's all within kind of just like, ah, it's light, it's light comedy going on constantly. I don't particularly get like, a meshed in that um, versus actually um, the uh, is it the last episode which was which was um, to bring to bring no and God all those names uh, with where you know she had genuine like I feel have these feelings for this kind of alternate Captain Kirk or the alternate guy who's going to become Captain Kirk and you really felt that, and it's like, I feel none of that, this one. Actually, that's a good reminder that the, the time travel one actually did have some really good stuff in it, in, especially in comparison to this, the wacky episode. And, you know, there's stuff like, okay, because, because of the farce, Spock doesn't tell his fiance, uh, T'Pring, or whatever the fuck her name is, what he's doing, which is just like, oh, wow. So you're, you're not only fooling the um the um in-laws for wacky purpose you you also decide oh i can't tell her because she's too stressed about her parents it's like wow that's a major betrayal and i mean that at least gets called out at the end and they have a break but then the break is used to immediately like this is a show of chocolate 
we are not going to withhold anything that's going to make anyone squee even a little bit. So the second they're on a break, Spock and a nurse chapel are boning away by the end. Or they're, they're, they're having super kissy time and you assume it's going to be super bony and there'll be lots of fan fiction of erotic fan fiction of envisioning that act um, or multiple acts, I, I assume. But it's just like they, they've they gone from having like good kind of, I feel like, core stories to having a lot of stuff which is just like, oh, this is all chocolate. Um, and then maybe I'm wrong because I've, I've seen some other people who are pretty, pretty kind of like um, critical of that kind of things, um, not get triggered by the tr triggered by this these episodes so i don't know i don't know but i just feel like i, I feel like there's been a real drip off, drop off and i think it's because they've fallen in love with the characters too much and fallen in love too much with the chocolate and have decided to just the balance feels off and i just don't feel like we're getting any we we're, the the really engaging stories are getting kind of spaced far out. I think the time travel one was a good one. Um, the uh, trial episode had some good points, had some good moments in it that I actually, I did enjoy. Like, they, wow, this, some actors doing some fucking good acting there. But overall, yeah. Mm, but, you know, maybe, maybe it'll pick up as the season goes by from my point of view. But um, I maybe, and this is maybe just my taste. Maybe I am. I want a much more, much more hard edge, um, science fictiony kind of thing with, you know, people with characters I care about. But I feel like at this point they're like taking for granted that I care about them. Um, ja, as I was watching this, and they were going in to see the, the 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 entity. They had this like moment of like, oh, are we? Am I? Are we going to do this? And and you have uh, the the quippy because they're all quippy. But the the quippy uh, the pilot woman say, oh, you mean I'm going to be the one who has to veto us doing this incredibly stupid and dangerous thing? It's like, well, that's not going to happen. And it's just like uh, this is none of this is earned. I don't care about these characters. I, there's no sense of danger. There's no sense of, you know, it's an actual emotional moment. It's just we're, we're, we're making references to characters who we don't really actually know that well yet. Um, oh, and it also keeps on, it, it, it starts off using voiceover logs, um, you know, their personal logs uh, for voiceovers, uses them at the beginning, and then um, just drops it. And it's just like it's it feels like lazy story storytelling because it's not it, it should be like a bookend. There should be a structural reason that you're you're actually using it versus like I feel like it's just like this is just an easy way to kind of let the, let us know what the characters are thinking versus actually having um yeah, voiceover can be a real lazy crutch, and I feel like it's a lazy crutch here, which they use to get themselves started and then they just throw away. And it's just like eh. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the latest episode of Star Trek, which, you know, is Star Trek. It's a light entertainment. I just wish it was a, this season was as well written as the last season of Star Trek, which, eh, don't feel like. All right, I'll leave it there. More videos later.